In this video, we explain the different types of accessory pathways according to the location of their proximal and distal insertions. The location of the proximal and distal insertions of the accessory pathway enables us to differentiate four types of tracts by passing totally or partially the normal atrioventricular bundle. First, we have what we call the atrioventricular accessory pathways that can be located in the left or in the right atrioventricular groove or paraseptally. Second, we have the so-called atriofascicular uh, bundles that connect the atrial myocardium directly with one of the fascicles or branches of the bundle of his. Third, we have the fasciculoventricular accessory pathways connecting one of the fascicles of the bundle branch system directly to the ventricular myocardium by passing the distal Purkinje network. Four nodoventricular fibers connecting the AV node with the ventricular myocardium. And finally, the so-called atriohesian uh, bypass tract connecting the atrial myocardium directly with the bundle of his. Which are the accessory pathways that can potentially result in ventricular pre-excitation? First, the atrioventricular accessory pathways. Second, the atriofascicular tracts. Third, the fascicular-ventricular anomalous bundles, and the, finally, the nodo-ventricular fibers. These are the four types of accessory pathways that can result in ventricular pre-excitation either during sinus rhythm or during pre-excited tachycardia, including atrial fibrillation. Atrohesian accessory pathways do not result in ventricular pre-excitation. They can insert more proximally or more distally in the bundle of his. But obviously, the activation wavefront has to proceed over the normal uh, bundle branch system to the ventricles and therefore they never result in ventricular pre -excitation. In the next video, we will provide a brief account on atriohesian accessory pathways.